I'm Ingolf Becker, and uh, I'm presenting work in, with, which is a collaboration with myself, Simon, and Angela Zasse, all from UCL. So we are studying our own university's new password policy, which is built on the premise that um, to encourage users to choose stronger passwords by offering them longer lifetime, password lifetime in return. So we heard about it, and we didn't design the policy, and of course then wanted to study it and collaborated with the university. So the old policy was quite fixed, 150 days. The password had to be eight, exactly eight characters. And now the new policy is a variable expiration policy, and the ca passwords can be between eight and uh, 30 characters long. There, is, there are some complexity rules which haven't changed, and now there's also a dictionary check um, to make sure that there is no dictionary word in the password. Um, the strength of the, the, sorry, the lifetime of the password um, is um, a linear mapping from the entropy to the days. So if you've got a password of 50 bits, that gives you 100 days of expiration, and then it linearly goes up to 350 days for 120 bits of exp expiration. The university uses Shannon information entropy to calculate the password strength, which is not the greatest measure, but it is still widely used and does the job for the, pur 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 for the purpose of the study, at least. Now, the password is supposedly your only password at the university. You need it for emails, Eduroam, Moodle, um, virtually most systems are on it. You do also need it for Active Directory machines, so if you use it in a lab or in a lecture theater, then you have to type the password there in by hand. And here on the right you can see um, what the change system looks like. So this is, there's a web application where all the changes and resets go through, and it tells you down there, I'm not sure you can read it, um, down there that the password, now for example what I have typed there, gives you 238 days of expiration. UCL is quite a large research institution. We've got 50,000 students, 20,000 admin or research staff, and a lot of alumni, although 70% of their accounts were expired. Now, we received an pseudo-anonymized version of the log data that um, get, gets generated when users interact with a password system. So we've had 16 months of data. Uh, there were 3 million and 3 million interaction in this time period, 200,000 password changes and 150,000 password reset uh, events. And on the right, you can see a histogram of the distribution of changes and resets and the associated password lifetime that these um, changes and resets had. As you, the first thing to notice is that they're fairly identical. There is very little difference in password that were generated or that were used in resets and password that were used in generations. And it's very strongly skewed to the left. Apart from this, this little 1% of users who go to all out and choose a password that gives them 350 days um, la lifetime. It's quite difficult to generate. It is 25 characters or so you need to get such a password. So straight into the main finding from this study is this figure here. The blue line is the mean password strength of all users at UCL over time over the 60 months that we have studied here. Initially, we observed a small drop in the strength between November 16 and February 17. So the policy came into place in October um, 16. And, but after that, so we guess that's while users become accustomed to the new systems, but after that, uh, the password strength increases from 145 days to 170 days, which is an increase in about seven bits of entropy. So okay, this kind of suggests that users have adopted slowly to the new password policy and eventually make use of their ability to increase their password lifetime by strengthening their passwords. There's a, quite a few cyclical behaviors that kind of need to be ex explained to understand the wiggliness of the blue line to begin with. So a quarter of users, as we have just seen from the previous slide, have a password um, strength of less than 110 days. And that means that they have to change, or that they change, on average, their passwords around every 80 days. Now, 
um, there are a number of events when a large number of users get, uh, get enrolled in the system, which, are, which happens twice. So at the beginning, there's quite a lot of users that start on day one of the new policy, and then 80 days later, they have to change their password, and because they had the weakest possible passwords already, they can only increase the password strength, which is what the increase uh, in February 2017 um, highlights. Similarly, the academic year starts in September every year, and at UCL that means that 10,000 new users, students, join the system. So the green line here is the mean password strength of all users, and is predominantly uh, influenced at around September 17, when, 17, uh, when 10,000 new users join the system. These users have initially weaker passwords than the existing populations, but as they change, start changing the passwords, and do it for the first time around December, January, 20, um, January 2018, they choose stronger passwords too. And their increase in password strength is quite pronounced and also influences the password strength of the entire organization. We also, I also drew on this the orange line, which is the steady state solution, which is an attempt to predict the password lifetime, the final password lifetime of the car of the policy. So for each time frame, um, we look at the changing behaviors of all users and extrapolate what this would mean if users continue to change the, their password in um, this manner. Now, this would, for example, mean that in April 2017, the, the uh, steady state solution is at 155 days. So we would expect um, the blue line to level off to this, to this number, to 155 days. However, it is actually constantly increasing and constantly changing, so we can't actually say that the policy has had its full effect yet. So even after 16 months of collecting data, we can't say that this policy will have this impact on password strength that is still evolving, which is quite a long time to be studying something to get uh, conclusive results. This is the frequency of uh, changes and resets and also the number of new users that have joined the system, just to highlight the num large number of users that joined the system in November 17, as the new academic year starts. Now, we would have thought that once users get more familiar with the system, the number of resets decreases. However, this is not the case. It remains fairly flat, or fairly high, I would argue, um, throughout the period. This brings me on to a quick summary of our findings on the changes and resets at, of the user accounts. 66% of users had to reset their password, and on average, this mean, meant 1.1 resets per users and 2.4 changes per users. There's only really two reasons why one would reset a password, that is, if you forgot it, and once your password expires, even a minute after it has expired, you have to reset it. There is no grace period for being able to change your password. The cost of a reset is higher than a change because you need to either go physically to a help desk or use the text message based reset system. And perhaps unsurprisingly, there is a strong positive correlation between password strength and the likelihood of having to reset your password before expiration. So users with stronger passwords are much more likely, in this case, four times as likely um, with, a, with a lifetime of 300 days to forget their password compared to users with just 100 days of lifetime. And as a third finding here, the more password resets, the weaker the password choice. Now, we didn't expect this, but this following graph displays the number, the average password strength um, of users grouped by the number of resets that the user has had, or will have had, in fact. So here you can see that for, zero, for users with zero or one resets, their average password strength is fairly well aligned and uh, continues to grow over time. This is also the case, the growth is also the case for all of the user, different user groups. However, users with more than one reset have passwords which are 10 days weaker, so very significantly weaker than um, the other group, other group than, zero, than those with zero or one days, which kind of resets, um, kind of hints at that one reset per user per year is potentially a good measure of um, acceptable, or good acceptable potentially, measure of 
a user's ability to use the system. There's also the cyclical effects here in, again, visible on this slide. So at 100 days, initially all the, all the lines remain quite flat, but then it, um, towards 100 days, from 80 days onwards or so, um, there is a sharp increase in the mean password strength. This is because at that point the first users will start to change their, pa will st start to change their passwords and the password strength increases because all they can do is they cannot choose a weaker password than, than they already have at this stage. Equally, at 350 days, you see this sudden strong drop, drop of mean password strength. This is the converse effect of users who had previously a password of 350 days expiration, and all they can do is choose, a, well, they can't choose a stronger password, on, on, and on average, they choose a weaker password when they change their passwords. Just to reiterate the fact, there were a lot of changes and resets. Not a single user had zero changes. A lot of users had three or more resets or changes over time. The third finding that I want to talk about um, here is the messages that UCL sends uh, regarding your impending passwords expiration. So UCL sends five emails to users um, reminding them that, the password, that their password is going to expire. This happens at 30 days, 20 days, 10 days, 4 days, and 1 day before the expiration. And on each of these occurrences, 10% of users act within 20, each one, each one of these emails, 10% of users approximately react uh, within 24 hours and change their passwords. So this graph here on the right shows the frequency of password changes relative to this day of password expiration, which is T0. And you can quite clearly see that there's an up, very few changes up to 30 days before expiration when suddenly the triggered by these um, emails, the number of, expiration, uh, the number of changes happen, uh, increase quite significantly. And then immediately as the password expires, the number of resets of the people who were just, didn't just get, done and get, get it done in time or forgot about it or, yeah. Um, have then, to, have then got to reset their password. So it's an interesting observation that if you warn your users too early, they will actually lose quite a significant amount of their password's lifetime, in which case actually users change their password on average 22 days before the, their passwords expire. We also had some demographic information about our users at UCL. Um, here I've plotted the mean password strength over time for different faculties. There is a clear trend that the, well, firstly to observe, all faculties respond to the policy change and they do increase the password strength over time. There is no observable difference between different groups, apart from, of course, that math and physical sciences have about 1.2 times as strong a password as education as the Institute of Education, which actually only joined UCL two years ago, so there might be some other explanatory factors here why they have weaker passwords. Um, equally, we have um, the same plot for the different relationships of users to, um, with the university. And you can see that the undergraduate and postgraduate students have this big dip in their mean password strength. This, this is, again, because of the new users that joined the system in September 2017. But in generally, teaching staff have the, highest, have the strongest passwords and students have weaker passwords, which can be potentially explained with, the, in, with their interactions with the system because teaching and research staff don't use, don't need to type their password ever and while students will have to type it on physical machines. I keep my password in a password manager. It is, gets 350 days, and I can't type it ever. But I don't have to type it. And admin staff, for example, they work on domain joint machines, so they are, if I had to type my, I would also, I would like be choosing a weaker password if I had to type it every day to unlock my machine. So there's some underlying, um, interactions, underlying reasons to, that can explain this figure. We also inquired um, from 93 users initially 
about their observations, about the perceptions of the new password policy. So this was in the, a couple of months after the new password policy had ro uh, been rolled out, and these users had just used it for the first time. Now, users appreciated the flexibility of the new system. Eight characters, the previous system forced them to have a password of eight characters, which was quite difficult. Um, now, but actually, quite a few of them did not notice the change of policy. And due to the very rigorous criteria, they, they found it difficult to create a password that was not labeled as weak, as this person says, and highlighted that uh, it can be too complicated to type difficult passwords. Right, let me discuss uh, quickly our findings here. So the intervention as a policy change was clearly successful. Users choose stronger passwords. Um, side of this observation is it took a very long time. So we looked at the data six months into the rollout of the new study and thought this policy is not working because at that point we were still pretty much level or had actually dipped slightly. So it is interesting to, when studying um, an intervention, it is, inter it is important to have some sort of measure of when the intervention has had its full effect, which can be uh, over 16, 18 months, can be a long time. However, from a security perspective, now this is where the, it becomes interesting. So Florencio et al. defined this region of don't care password strength, which is the region where passwords are strong enough to uh, withstand an online attack, 10 to the 6 guesses, and, but are weak enough, are too weak, to um, protect against an offline attack. And all of our passwords, caveat, um, Shannon Entropy, um, fall into this range of don't care, of this, this region of don't care. So actually, from a security perspective, there is no benefit to this increase in password strength. Cost benefit wise, so the policy has increased user cost because users have to remember and use more secure passwords. Um, but the only benefits are really in their perceptions that they now have some form of uh, control of their lifetime and are being involved in the system, which actually came out of the user studies too. So let me conclude. We studied a novel password policy of stronger password implies longer password lifetime at a university of over 100,000 users and for 16 months. Users play the game. We couldn't find a single user group which did not respond to the, password, uh, to the incentive. And as some anecdotal side notes, we found that one reset per user per year um, seems to be an upper limit of acceptability and otherwise it will have a, a negative imp impact on security in the organization. No, on the password strength. Um, I don't really see this policy, well, I can, the only way, the place where I can actually see this policy as being useful is to encourage users which have passwords weaker than the online guessing thres threshold, say of 10 to the 6 passwords, so have really weak passwords, to encourage them to go to passwords which are secure against online guessing, and then you give them as a reward a password which does not expire. So we are continuing working with our IT services to potentially improve upon this policy, but working with large organizations, it's been in particular institutional, uh, educational institution is um, difficult as the infrastructure is quite diverse. We have like quite a bit of more data, and if you've got specific questions of what to ask the data, I have drawn about 200 more diagrams and analyses. So it's uh, a lot more detail there that can be explored. So please, with that, questions. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Daniel Sokolov with Hazard.de. Um, have you measured uh, with each password change, uh, the, the, those users who changed the password, um, how much it gets longer? So I, I know T-Mobile has that, and I just add a number in the end every every time I have to reset it. So it starts with one, two, three, and I think I'm now I'm one, two, three, four, five, and uh, I don't think it helps any any guessing to defend against any guessing. So I was wondering if people do, if you have any numbers. Uh, the, so from the log data, the only number we get is the um, password lifetime in days. So we don't have any kind of uh, heuristic information on the password, on the, on the com password composition. So adding a number is actually quite rare. So previous research, the most common approach is to incre increment a number at the end or add a single special character. 
if a special character is needed. But um, because there is this quite substantial increase in entropy, it is more than just increment. Because from an entropy perspective, incrementing a number does not affect the entropy at all. So it, this changes us too substantial to be explained by simple um, alterations to a password. And uh, wh why do you think, it took you half a year to get back where you started. Why, why do you think, uh, what would happen there? Well, because the weakest passwords have uh, a lifetime of 100 days. So for the first 100 days, only the users that have issues with their current passwords will be the ones changing their passwords. So if I have a password with 350 days, um, choose it initially and I don't like it, uh, I will change and reset it earlier in the initial period. So basically, initially, it is users who are in the first 100 days, it's not users on regular changes that make the changes. It's users who have uh, problems with the current password that do the changes. So you had it in password yeah, no password. Ex yeah, ex yeah, lifetime. Yeah, users adopting to the system, getting no getting used to it, learning about it, uh, their options, and because a change takes you. Like the normal user will only do one or two changes, maybe three changes a year. On average, the user does three changes a year. So it is only whenever they have to iterate is that there is a chance to actually improve the strength. Hello, Rich Shea, MIT Lincoln Laboratory. Very interesting study. I was wondering a bit about user sentiment, and in particular, was this presented to users as, and do they perceive it as, either, oh, well, the university is going to punish me if I make a bad password by making me reset it again, or was the messaging and the perception more along the lines of, if I make a weaker password, the university will help protect me by having it expire? And neither of those two was the messaging. It was more of an encouragement empowering the users to uh, have a choice about their lifetime about their expiration. There was no really, no messaging about uh, the securing the, of the account. Like, there, in a sense, it nearly seemed like the university was aware that they're in this don't care region, but they wanted to do it anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, Rahul from Cornell University. It's a good study. Uh, I was wondering, did any users told you like they learned to trick the entropy meter that you are using? Because there are ways that you can trick the entropy calculation in the sense like by adding an exclamation mark will increase your entropy significantly. Um, that's my first question. And the second question is, did you see any uh, increase in adaptation of, uh, adoption of uh, a password strength meter? Because remembering a password with like at 70 bits of entropy and typing it is like very, Cumbersome. So, do you see like there is an increase in uh, password strength meter being adopted more and more amongst the university uh, users? You said a password strength meter being adopted. Oh, I'm sorry, password managers. Um, we didn't ask. We didn't. Um, so, in the th in the uh, hundred user qualitative interviews that we did, we didn't uh, find any strong encouragements of. Um, Firstly, of adding exclamation marks to hack the entropy, because not many users were actually aware. So this is, while there were quite a lot of engineers in this university, UCL has the full range of um, faculties. Mm -hmm. So the technical side is actually quite small, I would argue. So this, this might explain why uh, engineering have a, have a higher number of stronger passwords than other faculties. But um, no, we did not see this. And secondly, password, yeah, we didn't ask about, we didn't do a large um, quantitative survey to ask about password. Um, password. Managers. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, we'll take one last question and I'll ask the speaker to come and get set up. Did, did you consider including edit distance or diff, you know, some, some sort of diff measure in addition to strength? Um, I could imagine that once you've basically encouraged people to pick a, a strong or high entropy password based on, you know, expiration time, after the first trial, it doesn't really matter. I've already got a strong password, and now you ask, you could ask me to change it every day, and like the first questioner said, 
maybe it's adding a number, maybe it's changing a, a hash to a bang or something, right? I would imagine that after the first trial, you're going to see no correlation whatsoever after, after you know, the first changeover. Well, would have been nice to have these metrics, but it was not our system. Okay. And okay. if you managed to do it with the Orion University, I'd be happy to hear uh, okay. about it. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, thank our speaker one more time.